Welcome to the online video series presented by Structure Studios. This video will explain how to create retaining walls. It's important to have first watched the basic training series of videos to fully understand all of the techniques shown in this video. In this example, our project already has several hardscapes as well as a yard slope added. We'll start in the walls, fences, and railings stage and create our first retaining walls. With the line tool, we'll connect our existing wall over to our hardscape. We'll make sure the wall option is selected. We'll draw a second retaining wall at the bottom of the slope. When we're done, we'll go to 3D. In 3D, we see our walls, but they don't quite cut into the terrain the way that a retaining wall would need to. We'll use another technique to create our retaining walls instead. First, we'll delete the shapes that we've drawn in the walls, fences, and railings stage, and then go to the hardscapes and decks stage. Using our line and outline tool, we'll create a one foot wide wall. We'll connect from our shape on the left over to the hardscape on the right. Our autocomplete line makes it easy to see that we're lined up with our original point. We'll make sure the hardscape option is selected and set the shape to two feet tall. We'll see the difference right away with the hardscape cutting into the terrain instead of appearing on top of it. Next, we'll use our line tool to create another one foot thick wall, this time at the bottom of our slope. We'll zoom in to make sure our measurements are accurate. We'll set this to a negative two foot height. Let's place a wall in the middle. We've got a 12 foot gap, so we know we want to be six feet away from our last wall. We'll use the measure guide to mark this and begin drawing from this point. We have relative angle turned on. That means it's going to remember the last angle, which is the angle on the right. Instead, we'll turn on world angle to keep everything at 45 and 90 and set our height to zero feet. We'll remove our measurement and head to 3D. When we go to 3D, we can see our walls in the terrain. Notice the middle wall cuts into the terrain. That's not a problem. We'll take care of that with a few other steps in a moment. We'll access the terrain stage to correct this. In 2D, we already have our multiple slope lines added. We'll use the elevation tool in 3D to make some further changes. First along the bottom, we'll set our height to negative four feet and as we use the terrain brush, we'll see it change right away. It looks good on this side of the wall, but what about the other side? Unfortunately, using the brush, it bled through to the top of the wall. Same with the middle. We'll use our terrain brush to lower the terrain on the high side but unfortunately, it also lowers it on the other side. The good news is, we have a quick and easy way to make sure our terrain remains flat beside our walls. We'll return the hardscapes. As we've already seen in this video, hardscapes remain flat and cut through terrain. They're the perfect feature to use in order to remain flat between all of our surfaces. Using outline, we'll create a flat surface between our first two walls and set it to a height just below our middle wall. We'll do the same at the wall below it, using outline to draw it. And instead of negative two feet, we'll set it to negative two, three, and head to 3D. Right away in 3D, we see our flat areas thanks to hardscapes. Hardscapes will always cut through the terrain to make flat areas just like these. They don't quite look perfect, but don't worry, the material stage allows us to apply even ground materials directly onto these surfaces. We'll turn these into planter beds, so we'll select a mulch option. We're almost done, but the lower area beside the bottom retaining wall isn't quite perfect. Let's draw one more hardscape to make it right. Once again, we'll use the line and outline tool to create a lower flat area. As we learned earlier, simply using the terrain tools might not give us the perfect effect. However, by drawing these shapes as hardscapes, we know we'll have a perfectly flat area on either side of our wall. Once again, we see our flat area, but instead of mulch, we want this to match the surrounding terrain. 
First, in the terrain stage, we'll set our height to negative 4 to match the terrain and paint around the hardscape. Now the hardscape and the terrain perfectly match up. When we apply a grass material, it's seamless. We can't tell where the hardscape ends and our terrain begins. With plants and trees added, our project is complete and ready to present to our client. Remember to use hardscapes in order to create retaining walls, including areas where terrain would be. Simply apply an earth material. Thanks for watching. Make sure to watch the terrain and hardscape videos to learn more about each stage. You can find more information online at structurestudios.com, call us at 800-778-8996, or email support at structurestudios.com.